Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, did Wargaming's most recent attempt to try and solve a very problematic issue with regards to surface ship versus submarine interaction blow up in their face and actually make the problem worse? That is the topic at hand in today's video. What we're going to do is go through the changes. I'm going to talk about my experiences from playing both surface ships and submarines after these changes have gone live in these first few days after the patch. And then we'll discuss what effect, if any, has been had on the game. So let's go ahead and talk about the changes. So 13.1 went live uh, this week. And this is the first round of these changes that Wargaming is bringing forth to try and deal with the issues that have been, well, made present by the addition of submarines into the game. Now, to be clear here at the beginning as well, this set of changes that came out with 13.1, these are not meant to be like the end-all, be-all changes, right? This is the first wave of changes that they're bringing to the game. If you recall from some time ago, they released a dev blog with a whole host of changes they were looking at to deal with submarines, and this is just the first small bit of them. But let's take a look at what they did. So you can find all this in the update article if you checked out my video from Tuesday or just check out the link down below and it will be there. So uh, some highlights of the changes. They added in the depth charge airstrike for the Hindenburg and the Venezia branches. These branches previously had the depth charges on the deck. So these are two heavy cruisers. Well, not just two heavy cruisers, but two heavy cruiser branches that now all have the ASW aircraft at their disposal, meaning they no longer have to fly over to the submarine and drop depth charges on them. They can now just you know, in instruct their planes to do that. They themselves don't have to sail over there and drop depth charges on top of them. And this was applied to the Eugen and the Schroeder as well, two premiums in the uh, German nation. And then for Tier 5 and Tier 7 battleships, they increased the range of the depth, star of the jet depth, depth charge airstrike for Tier 5 and Tier 7 battleships. And they gave those Tier 5 through Tier 7 battleships and cruisers a shorter cooldown time on their depth charge airstrike so you can get more rounds out faster. And then they went ahead and they increased ranges for some of the premium ships that previously had teeny tiny ASW ranges like the Ohio, the Thunder, the Jean Bar, the Jean Bar B. They have similar ranges now to other battleships at their tier. So they no longer have like a five kilometer range. They have like, I believe, a eight or nine or even in some cases, 10 kilometer range now. And then some of the biggest changes came to three whole tech lines of cruisers getting the submarine surveillance consumable in a separate slot meaning that these cruisers now have submarine surveillance it's a consumable that will detect whatever submarine is around you in the radius of that consumable's action so that is the venezia branches the zal and the yodo branches again three entire tech lines now have this consumable so you might be thinking, well, Sealer, this sounds like some pretty big buffs to surface ships. And yes, they are. But there's some more changes that came to submarines and to these surface ships as well. So a big sticking point seems to be that they did reduce the amount of damage that the Tier 5 and Tier 6 battleships and cruisers airstrikes do. Because they are getting an increase in range and reload time, well I'm sorry, and um, deployment rate, meaning that you can deploy more of them quicker, right? They have a shorter cooldown time. So they decrease the damage slightly because of that. And that had a lot of players up in arms. And then for submarines, across the board, by about 20%, they buff the turning radius for subs. Meaning that they can turn about 20% tighter than they could beforehand so they're a little bit more maneuverable and that was another sticking point from a lot of the comments that i've read so those are the main changes so from the surface ship side of things of course i played the cecilia a bunch getting uh, footage for her review and then i played some other surface ships as i normally do because i do like playing the game how is it well um 
for sure, subrings are getting detected and pounded a lot more from my point of view, at least, from playing surface ships. They're not surviving quite near as long. Now, I've been playing mostly higher tier, right? So tier 8 on up. So I haven't really been seeing the um, effects of the shorter cooldown time on the tier 5 to 7 um, airstrikes, right? So I'm still just dealing with the normal tier 8, 9, 10 super ship airstrikes, right? So they are getting detected, however, more because, well, the Zals and Yodos and Venezias and their tier 8 and 9 counterparts all have submarine surveillance. And another comment I saw was that, oh, well, they gave the Yodo and the Zal and the Venezia branches submarine surveillance. These are, these are cruisers that chill in the back. I mean, like, yeah, a lot of players chill in the back, but gotta understand too the submarine's gotta go to you right so if your team's chilling in the back the sub's gotta go there to torpedo you like the, the torpedoes you know um, in like tier 10 15 16 ish kilometer range 12 kilometer range depending upon what nation or what premium sub you're using right and that's their maximum range and uh, torpedoes aren't like shells like you can't yeet them at full tilt maximum range and still probably hit that guy that's on the edge of your range you got to have them within a good like five kilometers of your range for your torpedoes to really you know get to them before they get out of your range so you do have to get close right but i mean like for the yodo yeah definitely that's a long range he spammer zao zao hasn't really been long range since what 2019 like zao's main battery range is less than that of the yodo and Venezia is a really tough cruiser. Plenty of Venezia players play her at medium range because you can with the smoke generator and her armor, right? So because of that, I mean, I've had plenty of submarines that have been surprised by Venezia's and Zal's popping submarine surveillance. I haven't seen a Yodo do it yet. I will, I will, I will give you guys that. I haven't seen a Yodo do it yet. But they are certainly getting detected a lot more because of that. And like has always been the case when they get detected, they proceed to get absolutely dogpiled by the friendly team because yeah you don't want a submarine lurking around on your flank and if you can see it you can most certainly pound the ever-loving crap out of it now the other thing that i i didn't really notice until i started playing subs in the current state is that it's not just the submarine surveillance that leading this leading to submarines getting detected a lot more it's this proximity warning they've given subs now which they gave it to submarines if you don't know what it is it's this little icon that'll pop up when you're within two kilometers of the enemy sub if you guys don't know the way submarines work in terms of spawning they'll both spawn on the same flank at the same spawn essentially just mirroring each other which means most submarine players they're going to go typically just forward submarines despite what you may hear they are quick but they're not quick enough to go zipping across the map at the start of the game unless you want to waste a lot of time to maybe not get a lot of re uh, reward right so typically they just go ahead and go towards whatever cap they spawned at and um, there were some situations where these submarines were taking such similar paths that they were just ramming each other without being detected so they gave submarines this collision alert icon now to where when you within two kilometers of an enemy sub it'll pop up well submarines have submarine surveillance equipped it's on a cooldown timer at the beginning of the match but if you really just want to you know get rid of the other submarine you can just hunt them down with this collision alert uh, icon and then when your submarine surveillance come out comes off a of cooldown you just pop it and now hello you've spotted the enemy submarine for your team asw proceeds to fall if your team's paying attention and now well he's dead or if you're in a situation where you have like for example an i-56 a submarine that does not have submarine surveillance and you're getting you know followed and dogged on by someone that does have submarine surveillance and you're kind of just screwed at that moment right so 
That's also something that I've been noticing a lot more. There's a lot more submarine versus submarine warfare happening, which is cool. That's one of the things I liked about submarines in the early days in testing is that, you know, you weren't really fighting surface ships all that much. You were trying to, you know, do a little bit of Hunt for Red October down there, and you're, you know, having submarine duels, which I thought was fun, you know, trying to, you know, dive and rise and turn and get your bow torpedo tubes around and stuff. I thought that's fun, and I like that that's kind of back now. But, again, it does lead to submarines getting detected a lot more. So, from playing submarines from that point of view, which, yes, I have played them. Um, I know it's kind of seen as a heretical thing, but, I mean, like, if you want to understand the enemy, you should definitely put yourself in his shoes. And understanding how submarines work is a really friggin' good way to understand how to counter them. So... Generally, from what I've experienced, if you are trying to play submarines with homing torpedoes in the traditional way, it's uh, it, it's definitely a bit rougher, uh, especially again at mid tier because of the you know the increased cooldown time, sorry, de decreased cooldown time of the ASW aircraft. Um, yeah, th th there's a lot of planes coming incredibly fast now. Um, and I know some players are saying, well, but they do less damage. The thing is, you don't have to damage a submarine to really screw it over. That's not really the thing that gets it da that, that screws it over. It's um, getting it detected. And the fact that you can spam these planes more often and essentially cover a, you know, cover more area with depth charges because you can send more of them out... All you have to do is catch a submarine within your blast radius, and it's going to start to leak oil. And submarines have a limited number of, of damage cons, and it's super easy to, you know, pop them with three or four flights of ASW if you got teammates near you. He's leaking oil, he damage cons it, and then you, you know, send another couple of flights after him, and now he's leaking oil, and that oil is going to, well, stay, because... You already popped damage con, and now since again you have the decreased cooldown time on your ASW planes, you can just hunt him down with that, and well, there he goes. On top of again, the, the the very likely chance that he's being hunted down already by your submarine using that um, proximity warning. If again, if they or a uh, smart submarine player and they're doing that, that's happened to me quite a bit. And I've been trying to play subs at higher tier, so. Yeah, it is a bit more challenging to play submarines trying to use the pings and stuff now because, you know, the pings kind of a giveaway of the your general location and that's going to br bring the attention of the ASW aircraft to your area and then, again, you're going to get hunted down from there a lot faster. Now, from the shotgunning side of things, um, that still hasn't been fixed yet and there are changes in the pipeline to try and deal with this it's a problem that of course very much needs to get de dealt with but i mean i took the gato out and i was still able to do gato things it still does of course depend upon the enemy ships not really paying attention to the signs of you being there at all um and in most cases it's like yeah i snuck up on this guy because he was distracted or he was selling in a straight line i did bump into like an akazuki from like two kilometers away and i somehow didn't get detected at the gato which i thought that was wild and yeah i, I shotgunned an akazuki without being spotted and that that's kind of dumb right 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 um but yes of course that hasn't even been dealt with at all just yet but like I've said beforehand, if you are paying attention, you can try and minimize that. However, again, you get the the guy that's, you know, watches Das Boot on a loop all day. He's going to be super sneaky and find you at your most vulnerable moment and then strike, right? So, but again, those changes are coming down uh, the pipeline. They're working on, like, messing with the torpedo acceleration to try and, you know, give those surface ships enough time to do something rather than eat a wall of torpedoes from, you know, four, five kilometers away, if not closer, right? So we'll see what happens with that. But overall, right now, have these changes somehow made the game worse for surface ships, more advantageous to submarines? No, I, I would definitely say not at all really um you're probably going to see more submarines in queue right now because players are trying out these new mechanics and such after a week or so it'll probably stabilize and go back to normal it happened 
I mean, shoot, every time there was changes to CVs with the CV rework, you know, you'd see a surge in CV players in the queues because players are trying out these new mechanics and such. So I would say, you know, it's definitely caused a spike in submarine players for sure because, like me, they're trying it out. But, again, I think it'll stabilize in terms of the population. But, no, I think it's a, a pretty net gain for surface ships right now because, overall, from my experience submarines are getting detected more and they're getting pounded more too by extension right um of course you're still going to have that one or two submarine players that can slip through they can be stealthy that can get by everyone and still do their thing but like i mean that's just kind of part of the game you know the class has to be able to exist and be able to to, to do something right I mean, it's a game. It's not fun if you can't do something in the vehicle you're playing, right? I'm not saying they're perfect. There's still plenty of issues. They still need to deal with the periscope speed, in my opinion. That's just stupid that they can rock and roll at their full tilt speed at periscope depth. I think that's dumb, you know? But that's been my experience with subs. If you're still having problems with them, I would highly encourage you, you know, just grind up to the tier 6 subs. Take them in the battle, see how the mechanics work, and see how to counter them. That's the best thing you can do right now in order to, you know, learn how to counter them. Play the class that's giving you trouble. That goes not only for subs, but if CVs are giving you trouble, light cruisers, destroyers, battleships, whatever, play the class, try it out. Knowledge is your friend. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful Friday. We will be live streaming right here on the channel tonight from around, well, this evening, I should say, from around 3.30 U.S. Central Time to around 6.30, 7.30, so make sure to come out for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful Friday and wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one. <laughs>